Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with talking about a few things. As we really kind of look at the space right now, we are sitting at and hovering just above $1 trillion in market cap at the same exact time that nearly the entire general public does not care one bit about crypto. Uh, try to talk to somebody that you know about crypto. Maybe they're not even in crypto, but I guarantee you right now, they'll probably be like, oh, I, I'm, I'm not touching that. I'm not even, you know, I, I've heard that it's this, I've heard that it's that, and it's always going to be negative. Um, and I would guarantee you that a very small percentage of the general public will even know what you're talking about or Maybe they'll even say, hey, yeah, maybe it is a good thing. Um, because guess what? At this current moment in time, as we look at the space, no one really cares. The general public is completely lost. Mainstream media isn't telling them to FOMO in yet. Uh, mainstream media is actually telling them, stay away. Stay away. Now is not the time. And also, at the same exact time, we have this. Fun fact. Less than 5% of the global population is invested in crypto. And I would argue, right? When we look into this, what percentage of that global population that is invested in crypto, what percentage of that population is invested into XRP, XDC, HBAR, QNT, Algo, Casper, you know, utility giants? I would argue that's a very small percentage of that 5%. Because remember, even the ones that are invested don't care about utility. All they care about is the price going up. When we really kind of look at the space, the major wealth creation will come from utilization. I know that that kind of sounds stupid to say, but guess what? Right now, massive wealth creation is not going to happen unless we hit mass adoption and mass utilization. And that's what we're looking at with XRP. As everyone wants to look at the price right now, and instead of complaining about it, I personally would be accumulating anything under 50 cents, like I've said, under 50 cents is the key. Because long term, when we look at these prices, I've always said, when utility really kicks in, no one, no one will be able to tell you how high some of these tokens are going. And the same goes for XRP, because a lot of people want to bring up market cap and say this, that, but the facts are clear. 95% of the global population is not invested into crypto. A large portion of the global population could care less about crypto. And we have institutions and financial giants lining up to adopt this technology at this current moment in time. While the general public, the retail sector, is asleep at the wheel. So when we really kind of look at this space, yeah, I do think that the new 1% is coming. I also believe that wealth creation, massive wealth creation, is coming as well. Also, breaking news, 24% of asset management firms have adopted a digital assets strategy with an extra 13% planning to do so in the next two years. The report surveyed 60 investment professionals across the US, the UK, and Europe. The interviewees included asset managers, hedge funds, and other investors. Approximately half, 48% of the study participants include digital assets or yeah, include digital assets, sorry, in their firm's uh, portfolio. Amber Data also forecasts that in the coming two years, an increasing number of asset managers will continue to emphasize digital asset trading and investment strategies. And you know what's funny about this is that this is from Cointelegraph. One in four investment firms assign senior executives to digital assets report. And when we scroll down, so here are some of the statistics. We do see these roles are being staffed up with almost a quarter of firms with a senior role dedicated to digital assets, reflecting seriousness about implementation as well as senior management buy-in. Organizations with senior role dedicated to digital asset strategy implementation, you guys have it, no, yes, and no, but there will be in the next 12 months. 24% of them have already adopted a digital asset strategy. And um, we also do see some of the statistics down here, but down here is where we get into the interesting things. So. Despite ongoing regulatory pressure in the U.S. crypto industry from the SEC and the CFTC, Amber Data predicts a potential positive outcome in the next few years. The good news is that the tide may be turning. In the next five years, the SEC and the CFTC 
are expected to be providing the most positive opportunities for investors in our study. Additionally, it highlighted that Ripple's recent partial legal victory against the SEC may attract more asset management firms to adopt a digital asset strategy. And we actually see that Ripple's ahead of the game with this. Um, they're, they're already actually expanding at this current moment in time. But at the same exact time that we are seeing these major hedge funds, asset managers, investment firms, like they are all lining up. And at the same time, well, guess what? We also see this. Shout out to 801 underscore XRP. G20 leaders reach consensus on all issues in joint communique. Uh, we endorse the G20 roadmap for implementing the recommendations of the G20 independent review. Fam, they agreed on several financial topics such as reforming international financial institutions, global debt vulnerabilities, crypto asset policy regulation, CBDC, DPI, and also AI. And um, listen, if you are not paying attention to the G20 right now, everyone needs to be because we are about to see a global G20 crypto regulatory framework launching this is going to change this entire space and it's expected by the end of 2025 um and we even see here so this is a very interesting um this is the one that i really kind of looked at in terms of the screenshots this is where we do see building digital public infrastructure so we recognize that safe trust Tr uh, safe, secure, trusted, accountable, and inclusive digital public infrastructure respectful of human rights, personal data, privacy, and intellectual property rights can foster resilience and enable service delivery and innovation. To this end, we welcome the G20 framework for systems of digital public infrastructure, a voluntary and suggested framework for the development, deployment, and governance of DPI. And then we also do see that we welcome India's plan to build and maintain a global digital public infrastructure repository. A virtual repository for DPI vol uh, voluntarily shared by G20 members and beyond. And also here we have take note of the Indian presidency's proposal of the One Future Alliance, a voluntary initiative aimed to build capacity and provide technical assistance and adequate funding support for implementing DPI in LMICs. And then here we have building safety, security, and resilience and trust in the digital economy. They are confirming that we are about to head into the digital age and into a digital economy. And this is all going to be underpinned by crypto assets with policy and regulation provided by the FSB, which by the way, guess what? The FSB already said that this global framework is expected by the end of 2025. And the FSB is working with the G20, the BIS, the IMF, and um, the World Bank as well. And remember what I've said, that those recommendations also come from Ripple. Ripple has been working with the FSB for a very long time, which is why I say Ripple already has those elite connections. And also they do mention CBDCs down there as well with the BIS, which the BIS and Ripple just recently came together on the uh, task force around cross-border payments. So all of this is lining up perfectly. And now we also add this. So uh, Black Swan Capitalist posted this screenshot, Ripple's XRP primed for a ballistic rally. Gotta love those clickbait terms. Amid adoption by banks in Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam. We do see Ripple's strategy is simple, acquire, innovate, and dominate. In the near future, holding XRP won't just be a sign of wealth. It'll be the ultimate symbol of financial empowerment and forward thinking. And listen, although that this is clickbait um, in terms of this screenshot from the news article, at the end of the day, Ripple has a very clear strategy, um, especially even around their digital asset offering, uh, especially with XRP, right? Because they are engaged on a lot of fronts utilizing XRP, obviously. And when we look at that, right, like I do question what's about to happen because Ripple recently expanded rapidly. And when we look at Fortress Trust, we broke them down. XRP Drops actually posted this. Um, who is Fortress Trust? We have the regulatory piece. Uh, through our puzzle, the team has roughly 75 years worth of banking and digital asset regulatory experience. Under the umbrella of Fortress Blockchain Technologies, there is Fortress Trust, a fully regulated, fully licensed non-depository trust company with an innovative full suit solution for Web3 infrastructure. Um, they also want to be the leader in that space. A lot of the team has a regulatory background. The CEO, Albert uh, Forkner, spent as a regulator 25 years 10 years as a state banking regulator, banking commissioner in Wyoming. The president, Tom uh, Michelina, 
has deep connections to the banker's environment. These are the people that Ripple is working with. And listen closely. Strategies. All right, so Tom, let's start with you. What's yes, Fortress ma'am. Trust? So Judy Fortress Trust is a fully regulated, fully licensed, non-depository trust company. And we're part of a larger ecosystem that we call Fortress Blockchain Technologies. And under our umbrella, we have Fortress Wallet, which is a fully embeddable, white-labeled wallet. And we have Fortress NFT. So we're able to do your NFT minting. You combine that with Fortress Trust, and we are an innovative, full suite solution for Web3 infrastructure. Yeah, and the, the idea is this area is developing so rapidly, and we want to be positioned to be a leader in it and not a follower. So we, uh, it's a heavy lift to have all of those under one umbrella, but yet uh, we think it's worth it because uh, really NFTs, tokenization is, I think, the next evolution of the internet, and we want to be a leader in that space. All right, now, Albert, a lot of your team has, they have a regulatory background. Mm -hmm. So tell me, how does that impact the way you operate your business? Yeah, so I, I spent my years as a regulator, 25 years as a, a, a state banking regulator, the last 10 as the banking commissioner in Wyoming, which if you're familiar with that, Wyoming was a, a leader and tried to be a, a fostering to in, institutions that wanted to be in the crypto and blockchain space. Uh, and so from that, I was able to see the industry, uh, the crypto blockchain industry, uh, evolve rapidly. And, but part of that evolution requires a compliant manner. You know, the, the move fast, break things, ask for forgiveness, not permission mentality has shifted a lot in digital assets. And so when I came on at Fortress, I wanted to make sure that I had as much regulatory chops as possible. Uh, but I wanted to find team members that understood and know how to balance both innovation and regulation. Uh, you can't have one without the other. You either get yourself in trouble or you just freeze and don't get anywhere. <laughs> and, and so we've, we're building a team up. I've, I've got some core um, uh, colleagues with me that we have roughly 75 years worth of bank and uh, digital asset regulatory experience. And I think that will position us to be uh, a leader in this space, give us an advantage. And then another part that's very important is because we have to have some strategic tech thinking, tech forward bank partners, someone like Tom, who's a career banker, coming on and managing those and establishing those relationships is also very important for us. Judy, Fortress has a regulatory body within that nobody else has. We are unmatched in this environment, which is why we bring experts in like Albert and some of his folks that he brought along with him. So we're very blessed to have the regulatory piece to our puzzle. And this is exactly why I say you need to pay attention to the connections that Ripple has been making. I know that I sound like a broken record when I say that, but Ripple has been in the space for well over a decade now. They know what they need. They know the key pieces of the puzzle that need to be put together before everything fully goes, to, goes live. And again, when we look at that, right, like Ripple is becoming the infrastructure for tomorrow. And you don't do that overnight. Like these things don't happen overnight. They've been building for well over a decade. This is why Ripple and also XRP is ahead of most. This is game changing. And also over here, we do see from digital perspectives. In short, Ripple bought Fortress Trust to help set up the flywheel effect for XRP. Oh, and the notion that institutions will only use XRP and not hold it. Well, I'll just let Joseph and Doso uh, explain it to you. Because again, we have. A response here. So this is the community director of Link2, uh, President Joseph Endoso's perspective on Ripple's acquisition of Fortress Trust and its long-term bullish impact to XRP. He's responding back to Scam Detective 5, talking about how no one can articulate why Ripple's acquisition of Fortress Trust is bullish for XRP. And it, it, it's just more so trying to create FUD around the space. I, I absolutely hate when people are trying to do this. Listen, there's, there's good and there's bad FUD. I do think that, you know, when there's negative uh, discussions going on, they could be very beneficial. We could learn a lot from it. But then when it's just when it's just FUD without any research done, I don't respect that at all. Um, but here we have from Joseph Endoso, 
I see no negative impact on XRP. In fact, I think that it will be positive impact longer term. My reasoning is more financial institutions adopt RippleNet and utilize on-demand liquidity. They'll need to decide whether to hold XRP temporarily, i.e. only for as long as necessary to clear and settle a cross-currency transaction on XRP Ledger or more permanently because of the continual flow of such transactions has reached the scale where constantly buying and selling XRP as a temporary holding creates huge cost overheads, trading fees, uh, fiat to crypto to fiat, conversion fees, etc., plus spot market risk inherent in that churn. Wow. In order for those institutions to go the other direction and opt to hold XRP more permanently, they'll need robust institutional grade custody solutions. That's one important reason why Ripple is moving to embed custody into their product mix today, I believe. But in the scenario where lots of institutions choose to hold XRP more permanently, there will be the secular and increasing demand for XRP by institutions that will have two positive effects on XRP price. Less volatility because retail speculative demand gets drowned out by the more stable utility demand from institutions and also institutional demand pressure towards the upside, which is again all very beneficial for XRP. And this is all really kind of leading into the holy grail scenario. Remember this? This got posted by XRP um, underscore crow. I want to say like well over a year and a half ago now. What do you see? First, get banks connected on RippleNet to settle with Fiat, then get them to source liquidity using XRP, and then get them to hold XRP directly. Holy grail. And this is from Adela Breo, the former global head of infrastructure innovation at Ripple, saying this. So listen, could this be the holy grail starting to morph into reality? It could very well be. And this is going to be very big to note and remember. It's very easy to complain about the price action. It's very hard to buy when nobody wants to buy. Just want you guys to understand that. We are nearly down um, almost to a 2x from where we were at back in July. And it's now roughly what now? Two months later. So personally speaking, I look at the risk to reward ratio on XRP where we are at today. You know, could we come back down to, you know, 30 some cents? Could we see sub 40 cents? 100%. And if we do, I will be prepared to buy. But ultimately speaking, when we look at XRP, when we look at the space, when we look at the future, I think that the future is very bright for utility assets. I think that the future is very bright for crypto. Um, I think that way too many people right now really just don't care. And I think that a lot of the people that are still here are getting frustrated, that are getting fed up, they're getting tired, impatient, whatever. And um, I personally love that sentiment, if I'm being honest, because it really proves that we are getting closer and closer and closer. That is why we are seeing so much FUD. That's why we are seeing so much doubt. And uh, like I said, I love when the market is like that. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. You guys did definitely leave a like, subscribe, to notifications on if you guys want free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Peace out.